Today we will solve Thailand Online Math Olympiad 2023 problem 2. We are given a polynomial p of x with real coefficients that is not the zero polynomial. Now we are asked to prove that not all roots of x cubed times p of x plus 1 are real. Because p of x is a polynomial with real coefficients, we can write it as the sum of i going from 0 to n of ai times x to the power of i where ai are some real coefficients and because p is not the zero polynomial we can choose n as the degree of p of x so a n is not equal to zero. This gives us an explicit representation for x cubed times p of x plus one. Namely it is equal to uh, one plus the sum of i going from three to n plus three of a i minus three times x to the power of i. The problem asks us to prove that all polynomials that can be written in that way have a non-real root. So let us assume the opposite so that uh, x1 up to xn plus 3 in R are the roots of our polynomial and this tells us that we can write it as a n times x minus x1 times so on times x minus x and plus 3. Taking a look at this equality, we are very invited to use Vieta's theorem because we want to get information about our roots because we want to bring this assumption to a contradiction. And moreover, we know at least the first three coefficients of that polynomial, namely 1, 0 and 0. In particular, comparing the coefficient of x to the power of 0, we get that 1 is equal to a n times negative 1 to the power of n plus 3 times the product x1 times and so on times x n plus 3. For x to the power of 1, we get that 0 is equal to a n times minus 1 to the power of n plus 2 times the sum of x1 times and so on times xn plus 2 and now we have more summons namely we sum over all products of n plus 2 of these n plus 3 real roots so we continue all the way up to x2 times and so on times xn plus 3 it would be nice to factor out the product of all xi out of that sum but if we take a look at our first equation we notice that it tells us that all of the xi can't be equal to 0 because otherwise we would have a 1 as equal to 0. So we get xi is not equal to 0 for all i and therefore we can rewrite our equation such that we get that 0 is equal to a n times negative 1 to the power of n plus 2 times x1 and so on times xn plus 3 now we multiply with the sum of all indices i of 1 divided by xi. Since all the xi are not equal to 0, and because a n does not equal 0 and minus 1 to the power of n plus 2 is neither, we can conclude that 0 must be equal to the sum over all i of 1 divided by xi. This is a really nice result. But we are not done yet because we can do the same thing for x to the power of 2. Which tells us that 0 is equal to a n times negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times some other sum. But instead of writing it down in this way, we immediately factor out the product x1 times all the way up to times xn plus 3. And for x to the power of 2, here we sum the products where we always leave out two of the summons. So after factoring this out, we have to multiply with the sum of all indices i less than j. We want to count each pair once of 1 divided by xi times xj. In the same way, this tells us that 0 is equal to the sum of all i less than j of 1 divided by xi times xj. To finish, we want to use these two equations. So let's begin with squaring the first one and we obtain that 0 is the square 
of the sum of all indices i of 1 divided by xi. This expands to the sum of indices i of 1 divided by xi squared plus the sum of all distinct indices i and j of 1 divided by xi times xj. Because that expression is symmetric in i and j, we can rewrite this as 2 times the sum of all i less than j of 1 divided by xi times xj. But we know this is equal to 0, and therefore we can conclude that 0 is equal to the sum of all indices i of 1 divided by xi squared. Now we assume that the xi are real numbers. But for a real number xi, 1 divided by xi squared is a positive real number. Since we are summing from i is equal to 1 up to n plus 3, we have a positive number of summons, each of which are positive real numbers, therefore this is greater than 0, and thus we get a contradiction. In other words, our initial assumption was wrong, and therefore we are done.